Hey folks, I'm Brendan and you're watching The Overqualified Henchman. I'm visiting my folks for the long weekend and you know what that means. Closet full of old comics. Is that not what that means in your family? Weird. Anyway, let's take a trip down memory lane. So how about Guardians of the Galaxy circa 2008? I was thinking about this as one of the newer ones to show you, but uh, that's almost a decade ago now, isn't it? Old, 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 old. Old. Now, the Guardians of the Galaxy as a name was around way before that, but this is the lineup that you're familiar with from the movie. We got Star-Lord, we got Rocket Raccoon, we got Tiny Groot in a little pot, right? You're gonna meet Mantis in the new movie, but I'm still waiting on my girl Phyla Vell. She's the daughter of the original Captain Marvel, and she was an item with Moon Dragon, Drax's daughter. Although it's Marvel space stuff, so it's a the whole thing. Speaking of comics that got turned into movies, and from about the same time as that Guardians comic, Big Hero 6. See that big robot guy in the background? Baymax. Somewhat less cuddly in this version. Still, you've got Honey, Wasabi, Go Go, Fred. It's a lineup from the movie and written by Chris Claremont. Of course, you kind of get what happens every time Claremont writes something set in Japan, which is mixed bag. There's also a whole sketchbook in the back of this issue with notes on the character's redesigns by David Nakamura. There's some cool stuff here like Fred's Devil Dinosaur t-shirt or drawing inspiration from Samurai Champloo, but there's also notes like uh, adding red eye makeup and hair dye to Honey Lemon to suggest both Geisha and Suicide Girl. Like I said, Mixed bag. Okay, so this one stays in the bag and board. It's a signed copy of The Spirit No. 1 by Darwin Cook. I met Cook at a fan expo in Toronto years ago, and that year there wasn't enough space. It was super crowded, it was super hot, everybody was stressed, but he was still super friendly, super nice. If you only know about Will Eisner's character, The Spirit, from that Frank Miller movie, Check this out. Cook's run on The Spirit was only 12 issues long, but it's some of my favorite comics. It's a great update and introduction to the character. Now, going back even further, when I was growing up here, there wasn't a convenient comic store anywhere nearby. Which meant that when I did pick up comics, it was whatever happened to be on the magazine rack in a convenience store, grocery store. One time I found a bunch of old X-Men comics wrapped up in bundles and being sold at a dollar store, and that was sweet. Which is how I got stuff like The Wedding of Scott Summers and Jean Grey, or X-Men number one with the big honking fold out cover with everybody on it. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> Nothing says early 90s comics like the bathing suit pinup. But when I started really getting into comics, it was early 2000s. So that was in time for stuff like the death of Colossus. Wolverine may be short, but he can dunk. Maybe the best thing about revisiting that era of X-Men comics is a little blurb, the comic that inspired X-Men the movie. Imagine working at Marvel in 2001 and going, guys, guys, the X-Men movie actually turned out okay. We gotta get on this, it might never happen again. There is a ton more here to look through, but I am supposed to be visiting my folks, so I should probably go do that. Thanks for watching. You can check out my channel for other comic related videos and you'd be doing me a big favor if you remember to like, subscribe, and share this with someone you think would get a kick out of it. Until next time, keep on henching. Oh sure, you might not be very impressed by a closet full of Bionicle, but what about Robo Riders? What about Throwbots? With glow-in-the-dark discs for extra cred.